Um, we're going to open the public hearing for Summer Rec, uh, Camp Raleigh, or Keen, whatever we are calling it. So Caroline's going to be moderating it. So we'll begin as soon as everyone's ready. Hi there. Thank you all for coming. We're here because budget season leads the board to lots of difficult decisions. Um, at the same time that the cap of how did summer recreation go this year. Summer Rec, um, referring to Camp Raleigh primarily, which has been in its, it has completed its third summer, but Team Camp also, which has been through its second summer, um, are a new iteration of summer recreation programming that has been volunteer organized, shall we say. And this was the case for decades that summer recreation was volunteer organized um, when those volunteers resigned four years ago, the select board at the time cut the programming for similar kinds of concerns, liability and safety and such. Um, so, so this group of volunteers was charged with safety, um, creating, recreating the program in a safer way, but also administering it under the select board's guidance um, in a way in which it would bring in as much revenue as it was expending to run the programming. Um, so a group of, I don't know what else to call them, but tenacious workaholics got together and did a fantastic job with what we've experienced for the past three years. And they've come very close to becoming what we call revenue neutral, with bringing in um, about as much money as they expend. Um, but there are still some little things falling through the cracks and some bigger concerns emerging here. And so there are some complications which are, are clouding the board's um, decision-making process about how to move forward. It's very difficult to run programs by way of volunteers. Um, you can't hold volunteers accountable. You, you can only hope that they show up and do a certain level of things. You, you can't admonish them when they quit due to family problems or whatever else may happen. If a program's running, the town is then committed to running the program regardless of these volunteers that the town has come to rely on. So that's kind of a functional disability of the way this has been set up, which will continue to be a problem for the foreseeable future because of a, you know, because completely staffing the administration of it seems to be prohibitively expensive at this point, but maybe something that could be worked toward, perhaps. So, the volunteers, while very competent workers they are, are only a few number of people who have an enormous, and they've done a great job with what they've done, but now there are fewer of them with a bigger task before them. And the bigger task before them is that we need to stop the little balls from dropping um, because it's not really clear who is responsible for individual tasks. So it was put to them that the way to move forward, if this is to move forward, is that we would need to have job descriptions for all the functions that the committee does. They write grants, they manage registrations, they do a number of things. They interview prospective employees for recommending to the board. And, and all of these things are time sensitive and have more details. Come on in, have a seat. Um, and, and we need to make sure that every aspect of all these jobs is, is that everybody knows what they're signing up for and what the calendar dates are to meet with each of these tasks. So then in addition to that, there are a bunch of policies and procedures that we may or may not have. We're not, part of the problem is that we're not really sure of what all the, what all the deficiencies may be because we've never had a fully documented program. So here we are in Rollinsford where we live near bigger communities that function more efficiently and have um, 
um, higher levels of service. And we're in a community where we are not as fully staffed. We don't, we don't have that same level of staffing, and we just can't function in that same way. And so, so the problem before us is if we are to move forward, we need to write programming and hope that we can get this program to the place it needs to be to alleviate liability concerns. Um, the select board's been talking about whether or not to fund a rec director who would be part-time, except in the summer, who might help with this. That comes with its own challenges because it's not budgeted for this year. So it would certainly be helpful to start that task now, but that's not been funded funded for it with 2019 dollars. If they were to even put it in the budget for 2019, that budget is not approved until 20 it, it, until March. And so that person, so so they're kind of taking a risk at using budget dollars that have not been approved. If the budget is not passed, then they've already expended the money to have this rec director. They'll end up in a default budget, which creates its own, you know, budgetary challenges, and then they're funding this rec director with this shortfall. So that's another decision before them. Um, the insurance company, Primex, that the town works with, had offered to review some of our policies the parent camper handbook and the staff handbook, um, they have since decided that that is beyond the level of that which they do because it just requires so much work. It's beyond commenting, but it's, it's, it's really the writing of it. They're, so for whatever reason, they are not going to comment. So the other challenge is that it their suggestion is that it will require legal dollars, town council to review documentation um, for this to move forward as well. Um, not that it, ha you know, the board can choose in what manner in which it goes forward, but it is the advice of the insurance company that the documentation be reviewed by town council before we decide that the program is ready to run. The, um, any attorney would need some time to do that, so the program would have to be written with enough time that that can happen before the program is set to run or before even registration is open. So, so the timeline for all this is quite constrained. So that is the background by which we are um, bringing forth this conundrum to the people today. It would, um, it would seem as though people would come to a recreation public hearing at risk of camp closing who are interested in supporting camp. Um, that, that comes at the legal cost. Um, it would take some of my time, which I'm happy to do, but is, is the decision of the board to take my time away from things that may be in the office. So. Anyway, I think that's a bit of a, enough of a background. I'm going to start with a letter that the select board received via email because, because it's an opinion to be read before you and, and for everybody here, but um, it also, just for your information, um, this is a resident who does not have children, um, in the, but a resident. In the years prior to Camp Raleigh, the town budget for the summer recreation program um, the town budget for the summer recreation program was approximately 17000 for labor alone, and the accounting for the program expenses left something to be desired. Once the newly constituted recreation committee began, the members were told to make it safe and revenue neutral, the latter being a big ask considering the prior budget. The committee has made the program safe and nearly achieved the goal of revenue, revenue neutrality. The total cost of the town over the past three well less than the expense of one summer's labor budgeted in prior years. The Recreation Committee should be commended for this. Now it appears there are additional concerns to, this, to the Town Select Board such as liability, especially liability as to children with disabilities who attend Camp Raleigh. Another worry is the cost to the Town for the administration of the Summer Recreation Program. As a result, it seems the Select Board would rather not fund the program for 2020. The issue of liability should be addressed with the town's insurance company. Why this was never considered before is a mystery. Furthermore, the Recreation Committee can other towns resolve similar problems 
and seek the advice of the New Hampshire Municipal Association. As to administrative costs, some of these might be resolved if the Recreation Committee hires a Recreation Director who can report to the Select Board. This would professionalize the program and take some of the workload from the hardworking volunteers. Additionally, certain policies and procedures could be adopted as to the Recreation Program itself to ease the burden on town administrative resources. Rather than deciding not to fund the program and destroying the momentum of a good program that is improving with time and effort, it might be better to conditionally fund it with a select board vote for final implementation. This will give the Recreation Committee a few months to address these outstanding issues. If these issues cannot be addressed before the date necessary to prepare for the summer season of 2020, it would then be reasonable to suspend the program. Thank you. Lorraine Hansen, Watson Lane. Um, so she brings up a, no a number of, of points, some of which we have addressed. Um, but I guess it is important to note that even if the board does not decide at this point to cut summer programming from the budget, that doesn't mean that they would decide that when the time comes around that the program is in a, um, a position to move forward. So, with that. Uh, I think it would be helpful to have just some, some basic data. And so, uh, one question that I'm curious about is what the uh, net has been over the last three years. You know, I hear you say it hasn't been quite revenue neutral, so what has been the, I guess, the deficit, for want of another word, over the, you know, each of the three years. And then from level of service, um, I'm curious as to how many uh, children are serviced throughout the summer, and then the average per week, because, you know, some, some kids may come two weeks, some kids may come six weeks. So if there were, if there were like an average, what would that be? We have people, cl people clamoring in the audience. Kelly, do you want to take that? Um, yeah, I think, well, right off the top of my head, I can tell you the money part. Um, Celia might be able to, uh, might be have the numbers for you for of kids. Um, Last summer we were about 3,500 in the red, and I believe over the last three this years, past, this, past this past summer, summer yeah, um, we've been um, roughly about that. So we're it, it's it's $8,500. Is that the, our total that we did? 8,500 over well, three years. Over three years. But about 3,500 a year, mm -hmm. roughly. Yeah. One year it was as low as under 2,000, mm -hmm. and then the next year was 2,000 and something, and this year was last the first year. And we came in between 3,500 and 4,000, okay. And I know this past summer, Camp Raleigh had 85 kids enrolled, and Teen Camp was 18. So I, I have those numbers in my head. I don't have the other. That's on <laughs> average. We had 109, sorry, since I'm silly, um, 109 registered campers for the summer, and we averaged between 65 and 75 per week. Um, that does not include the teen campers, where we averaged roughly six per week. Well, it was a little higher. Well, when you take the, down the lower yeah, weeks. So we had two weeks that were pretty low, um, but it was more bad. So, okay. um, we also have a tendency to have the first couple weeks be very high. Mm -hmm. And then as the summer goes on, we like families plan vacations. And we are one of the few towns that opens before the 4th of July. Some towns don't open until after, so a lot of people take advantage of us from out of town. And we were told that um, once the air camps opened in their communities, they would switch over. And so we hired extra staff, which we believe contributed to us going over there. And out of the three years that we've been running, this was the first year, 2019 was the first year we went over our budgeted amount. The prior two years, even though we had a deficit, we stayed within our budgeted amount and did not reach our budget that was in the town um, select board. Did we answer all your questions? Yeah. There's an awful lot to unpack in all yes. the information, and I, I'm not holding it all in my head. But first of all, I also want to I I say again, the people who've been running the wreck have done, I think, an enormously tremendous job. Um, 
from what it, from just what's been for the last three years is, I think, something exceptional. People talk about it. I hear a lot of good things about it. So absolutely exceptional. I would urge the select board to seriously consider funding a, um, a, a, a director, a, a, a year-round director. I think that it, it's a commitment to our community, but also even, even some of the surrounding communities who send uh, people here. And it's a, I have no idea what it would cost. I have no idea what the actual liability um, concerns are. I don't know if there have been claims. I don't know um, if it's our insurers who are concerned or if it's just a general concern. Um, I, I, I don't really know. And those things have to be answered, of course. Um, given um, the school board has, has currently been given a new policy that is a required one, which is student wellness about being more active, about making sure children have a chance to be outside and be active every single day. I think this adds to that. Um, it's making the school board look more at, at how to make, uh, help kids be more active during the year in school, but this is not during school hours. And the wellness program is, of course, for, for all children all the time. It's not just school children. It's for all children all the time. And I think a camp, like Camp Raleigh, encouraging children to be outside every day and then doing some of the activities that they do. There are a lot of things I wanted to comment on, but I, there's so much there, I'm sure I'm not remembering even all the things that have to be unpacked. But um, as, a, as a citizen of Rollins I, I believe that it would, it would be a, um, something that we should seriously consider um, as a service going forward in any way to support um, the, the volunteers who have been doing a tremendous job. I'll add a little bit to... Um what you touched upon, the liability concerns. There have, no, there have not been any claims. Um, there were just a couple of incidents, incidences this past summer which brought to light the fact that we don't have policies around um, certain things that might happen. And we don't know that our... Um, we hire teenagers for counselors. We don't know that we're we can pretty much know that we're not giving them the training that they need to act accordingly if certain situations happen, and yet we know that we're not even aware of what all the situations might be that could happen. So um, there were a couple of behavioral things that happened. Um, certain children with certain needs that we were not staffed for and we were not ready to accommodate, um, which the staff handled quite well, but it has led the board to be concerned about, you know, that that, that was, we, we kind of lucked out that they worked out well in that they could have been different kinds of needs that resulted with different outcomes that we were not prepared for. And so um, there is a behavior policy in the um, student camper, the, the camper parent handbook. It's not really clear whether or not um, I mean, other communities use that, and that's clear and that's fine for them. Um, we're not sure that it's not discriminatory. Um, just because other people are using it, that doesn't mean that it is. It doesn't mean that it isn't, but it's something that we should have um, town council review. If something happens are, and, and a student is expelled because of the behavioral policy, are we... Um, liable to refund their their registration fees or not? Um, are we, you know, any one of a number of um, needs, people with some kind of needs could register for programming and, and because of the ADA we have to accommodate those within certain reason and we don't know how to forecast or budget for that. So it's not about a concrete anything that that actually happened that led to a claim to answer your question, but it's just more about general liability concerns of, and um, with regard to things that could happen, but also with regard to budgetary aspects in meeting needs that you can't forecast. In response to the refund, I believe our policy that's given to all the parents, uh, the camper, parent handbook, which includes the behavior sheet that's signed by the parent and the child when they arrive, does say no refunds will be given if your child is expelled. So 
does that cover us? Um, or if it says something like your child, no refunds will be given if your child blah, 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 you, can put it, you can put anything in writing, anything can be challenged. So you can say that and you can hope that people go along with that, but anybody has a right to challenge any kind of policy. And so that's why it's prudent to have it reviewed by town council to be sure that the behavior policy and what they're signing off on is, is for most students, is I guess not discriminatory is the bar that we're trying to set. So, you know, while we can put whatever language in our policies we want to put, that doesn't mean that they carry water, that they hold water. And we don't know. And so, so there are all these things about all these policies that we just don't know. I also have a question talking about policy and procedures. My understanding is that the REC committee forms the policies and procedures and then passes them, we vote on them, give our recommendation, edit them as necessary, and then we pass them on to the select board. What is the time frame for the select board to review them and pass them, put them into place? That's a really good question because the select board has had its own challenges with reviewing non-recreation policies because they have a number of other things on their plate. And so, you know, while this is a recreation conversation, for the board it's, it's a bigger picture conversation about how does rec fit into everything else that they're trying to juggle because you're right, it's not really, um, you know, the rec committee should agree that this should be our policy but really the policies can only be adopted by the select board. So it would be a commitment on their part to, to review and approve policies. Yeah, and if I may say, if there were a, a, a director of, of REC who would be um, responsible for making sure the policies are written and reviewed by, by legal counsel, then presented to the select board, knowing that they've already been reviewed by legal counsel, that makes a big difference sure. in, in, the, uh, in, the in, in, the, in the time commitment that the board, the select board would have to give to, uh, to, to, to look to do them over. But that affects our legal budget, which we haven't considered that part of it. Either. Well, absolutely, it would be have, to, have to be part of the line for, for, for the rec department, right. absolutely. Well, no. not for the rec department. The only one who can authorize legal is the office. Okay. So, so again, that's, that's the point for the board, that it's not here at budget time. They can level fund it, but, or, or fund it really like to the committee's request, which is more or less level. Um, but that does not address legal, and it does not address a recreation director. And we're not even really sure, because we've never done this before, how much time to budget for a recreation director outside of the summer, and whether or not that amount of time will be sufficient. And, and what to budget for that are all, you know, we're down to the 1130th hour without enough information to even make those decisions. So this is really hard. And having been in kind of a similar situation on that side, I know how difficult this is. And I'm not quite as sanguine as you are about the town's ability to do this because if if, if, if I think you alluded to this in your opening statements. Whenever we get into a situation where we're trying to fund something the way it is, should properly be funded, you know, we've got the competitive salary market that are, surrounds us. And so I, I don't know what a rec director costs, but it does seem to me that that looks to be the right way to go if we want to continue um, a program with you know, professionalism and uh, concerns about liability. Someone who understands all of these things, in an account, you know, because it's his, her profession uh, to do that. And it, it, I, have you run the numbers? Do we know what that would cost? And if it's, you know, one day more than, or one hour more than, if, if, you, if you're full-time, you're going to have to do the retirement It system, won't be full-time. Which is it the, would be a, I mean, it, we couldn't afford a full-time one, so, for sure. But it would, I mean, yeah. looking at part-time, for sure. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I, this is really hard. Mm -hmm. I will say, what, can I just say one other thing, mm -hmm. because I haven't said this too, the, some of the people who are behind me and whatever have done an amazing thing to bring this thing. You know, Phoenix out of the ashes mm -hmm. three years ago, and it, mm -hmm. 
things. So I commend that. And, and it, it is just really difficult when you're dealing with you know, volunteers uh, to, to try to cope with something that requires a lot of resources like this. But they've done a great job. Mm -hmm. um, we, as a rec committee, met with Heather Muzzleroy. Muzzleroy? Um, <laughs> who is currently the rec director in Elliott, Maine, in February. And if you are, the meeting notes are on the drive from that, and they should be accessible to people. In that meeting, she says um, the going rate is between $15 and $25 an hour per um, person for a rec director. And she highly recommended that we get one, and that there are other ways to fund them. For example, she funds one, there's, she's one of three, and she funds one of hers with a grant through your hospital hmm. to involve the community in recreation, mm -hmm. which has health care mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. So we have been in contact with Wentworth Douglas Hospital and Convene and MD to talk to them about what they could offer us, too. So we have some of that information already gathered as a committee, and it's on our drive. I think she said something like $23 an hour. Does that sound like it? Uh, for some I keep in mind like that they receive state funding from their sales tax or income tax or whatever they have. It's a whole different ball game. It's not all coming from town. Yes. And I know as a rec committee, we've worked diligently to talk to the different towns around us. Um, we've been in contact with Summersworth and Barrington. That's where our policies and procedure manuals come from. And it's like, just like the select board does, you look at surrounding communities to determine what they use and you adopt it for your needs. And that's what the rec committee is trying to do with our policies and procedures. And I believe our manual comes from the town of Barrington. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the surrounding towns, they all, you're right, they have full-time people, but they have less people that work in their offices than we currently do. Um, for like Summersworth, there's two or three people that work and then they rely heavily on volunteers. So like their soccer program is all coached by so uh, volunteers. Same thing with um, South Berwick and I know that's a different state and they have different rules. But they have three people on their rec committee but all of their programs are coached by volunteers too. Yeah, I mean, even though the funding may be different, it's, it's still the cost. I mean, you're, you're not saying it's this after what the state kicks in in Maine. It's that, that's what it costs, regardless of, in, in our case, it would come mostly from, in, entirely, maybe some grants could be written, but let's, if they're not, they're entirely from the town of Rollinsford. But I've also been hearing that you've been, you have, you've been pretty much, pretty much, Pretty much even, uh, and and nowhere near the seventeen thousand that used to be budgeted is what I'm hearing, and I don't so I don't know. And, 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 I'm, I, there's a lot in my head I'm trying to get out too, and I'm sorry. Um, it, I'm I'm not just being uh, uh, sanguine or complacent about about we do this, but I think we do need to think about it. The hard work that's gone into the last three years can be stopped dead if, if, if this program goes away. And it's going to be twice as hard for a group to come along. A group will come along sometime in the future that will try to resurrect it, or at least that's my hope. But we will have lost the momentum that this group has, has worked so hard uh, to build up and, and done such a good job of. Uh, so I don't know if, if, if the town uh, can see its way it, it, to fund it at the level it used to be funded at to see if that would be enough to to get us going forward. I mean, I really don't know. It is, it's a difficult situation. I understand. I mean, we've, back, in the, back in the day when we had town meeting, we, we all heard everybody's uh, objections to spending um, a few thousand dollars here and there. So I realize how difficult it can be. But uh, again, I, I, I think that it's worthy. I, I, I think the idea of, of contacting hospitals and trying to find out what they would do again because of the um, of, of the, fe there are federal level level policies coming down about getting people out and moving and, and active and doing those things, and they're just starting to come down again. Um, 
not like in the 60s, all, and, and, well, never mind, we won't go into that. Um, but anyway, um, I, I still, th as a citizen, I still think it would be a very positive thing for the town to just see what, see what can be done to try to keep it moving. Um, Judy, and that, you know, it's really great that that's coming from the school board because I think, you know, well, it's coming from me as an individual. Yeah. Well, well, the <laughs> wellness, the wellness, <laughs> yeah, part, that wellness right? policy. Yeah. So, and, and I, and you know, this is this is why I got involved with this, um, because you know, my passion and my hopes, and seeing all that um, is athletic related, you know, and my vision that I brought forward to the rec committee hasn't always come through as keeping our kids active and, and trying to get them motivated to be moving. I mean, we saw that a big problem this in, within our teen camp alone, that the one you know, couple hour period of time on Fridays that were supposed to be getting them sweaty and moving was, I don't want to do that, or people wouldn't show up. So, you know, my whole thinking is, well, how do we, how do we address that? Um, and so what I, I actually talked, um, I don't even know when it was, a week or two ago that Celia and I came in to talk about our program, and we did talk about, you know, let's not have teen camp. Let's focus on Camp Raleigh and take that budget of money and then hire the rec director. Um, I think it, it gets very dangerous for this town. People stay in their houses. People don't visit other people. Um, if we cut this program in the summer, kids aren't gathering at the school. Parents aren't gathering at the school. This is a big community issue, not just a safety and um, a safety issue for parents. It's also it's also a place for their kids to be safe while they work. And, you know, we have extended our hours to 7.30 to 5.30, which was never, it was 9 to 3, the original hours. So, um, you know, a lot of parents need us. Um, can they go next door? You know, I guess. But honestly, I start thinking about it. Why do I live here? I have, I have five kids. I get to ship my kids to Dover and Summersworth and South Berwick to do anything recreation related. Why, why are families going to move here with young kids? I mean, I think that's a serious question that we need to think about in, in progressing this town forward. And we have a lot of new houses being built, but if we start cutting programs for kids and families, who's moving into them? Um, we just got an email, and I don't know if you know, we've talked about the Sandy Bank rec area. That I just got an email from Tamara to talk about that and talk about what we can do there. You know, gosh, I would love to see a rec building and a tennis court and a basketball court, <laughs> right, all in there. That, that's my vision for our town to gather. Um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lose some of its cohesiveness and some of it's special, special, you know, place to be for families if we get rid of this program. Well, it, it, it sounds like you're still a, at least a small core of committed volunteers because I'm hearing from them. There's four of us remaining, I believe. Five if you count the exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> and six if you count the town administrator. <laughs> Which is not to be discounted. Right. Um, it's a lot of work for yeah. five people. And we put a plea out there. Yeah. So we have twice. two people. We have two people. We have two people. Guaranteed two people. Who will, two people so that who will, who will okay. come forward. But forward. that was a struggle because it was, we put a plea. I mean, what they've done with the small staff they have is, yeah. is amazing. So, however, there's only so many hours in the day. Right. So, so I, I have a, um, just a couple of, you know, grant-related opportunities. The, NF the NFL is, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to do to get kids out. Like, like 60. And the Boston Red Sox, you know, they're supposed to do a lot of community kinds of things. 
so they're worth talking to. Um, I do know someone who is about to retire, uh, who is on the rec committee in the town she had been living in, who I think might be happy to step forward. I just don't want to name names because I obviously not the person who would come forward. But uh, you know, come it, it would not be until next June or July, but. It is a lot of work, I understand. And, and the problem is that a lot of work is, is right now, and it's very time sensitive. What is the... So, so here we are at the, at the end of 2019, in 2019's budget, where rec funds are expended and we need a rec director to help move us forward, or we could perhaps get by with um, the select board and I guiding a robust group of volunteers. Um, whether you know, it, it's just about the board deciding to allocate the time, my time, in that way. And can we get the program written to the point where we all feel like we've got nets under all the balls that have been dropping, and we feel like the program is secure? with enough time that if the board wants to send it through legal review, we can do that before registration's open and we start hiring staff. So we need to, you know, so, so they have the winter here. Winter with volunteers and my time and maybe a rec director, maybe not. The rec director, again, is a challenge because it's not budgeted for 2019 and we don't have approval of 2020 funds until March. So a rec director is going to handicap a budget or both budgets um, potentially until this is until we know this is up, up and running. But, but, but wouldn't a rec director also maybe come in and set priorities? Maybe you don't have to have a net under every ball that's falling. Maybe you don't have to. Maybe you don't have to do everything right away. But maybe some. Well, yeah, that person will have to be paid this. I'm uh, getting that in my ear here. Um, but, but, but perhaps it would be more efficient and effective. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just You're quite right. right. It's just what is that minimum? Where do we set the minimum bar? And, and, and does it reach that bar? And, you know, looking for those grants. It's just time intensive yeah. to manage, yeah. and the board has to get a choose to dedicate the time in that way. Is it helpful to consider uh, not doing the, the teen camp? Is that helpful? It's or helpful. Not? Whether or not it's enough is, is, is... Because it does make a certain amount of sense to say, okay, let's concentrate on our core and let's try to get that really on sure footing uh, with the appropriate personnel and, and everything. And then at some point in the future, if that happens, then you can consider uh, perhaps re you know doing something for older children. And that's a, that's another consideration. Can you? Can, can, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, okay. I'm sorry. Can you verify? Isn't there an overlap in age too that some of the kids who are in teen can still be part of Raleigh? Wasn't there some kind of a yeah. age lap? So it was just were, if the kids were 12, they the parents could either put them in either camp, mm -hmm. uh, de you know, depending on their you know idea of their kids. Mm -hmm. maturity level and if they should be in one camp versus the other. But one camp was only three days a week versus mm -hmm. the five days a week. And um, so we, we had a few of those. It was, it's mostly kids entering the seventh grade that mm -hmm. that was kind of. So some parents wanted their kids still in the Camp Raleigh and others mm -hmm. were comfortable sending them with teen camp. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, as, as far as work workload-wise, teen camp was a big pain because everything we did was a PO and you know it always cost more money than um, you know the two hundred dollars and mm -hmm. it, it just it was just mm -hmm. a lot of yeah a lot of work and a lot of administrative work so that you know might be helpful to not be to not have to do that I so, would beg to differ I think the team camp is beneficial it mm -hmm. a lot of the kids I talked to that are in sixth grade now that didn't make the cutoff were excited to go to teen camp, so I think we'll lose some that we may never get back. And teen camp has made a profit every year that it's been in existence. And teen camp's also a program that can be set up 
in advance, we can get all the POs, we can do the schedule, and everything can be done in March or April. Um, and it doesn't matter when we, like if there's a bad weather day, we can switch the activities around, and it's just a simple phone call to the bus company and say, here we go. And it's one staff member who's running that whole program. The last two years it's run, we haven't gotten enough people to do that. And they are paying um, more per week for those three days than a Camp Raleigh resident or a Camp Raleigh out-of-town person is paying for a full week, five days a week. I, I mean, the only reason we were in the plus, though, was because I drove. So that's <laughs> I drove four trips. Can, can I ask? When, when could you, I'm sorry, could you state your name for the record? Oh, Greg Tierney. Gregory Tierney. Um, I'm just curious when, when it was determined what the cost per kid would be for camp, was the intention to set the rate at a point where the whole program would mm -hmm. achieve yes. the neutral, budget neutral? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you do the math, the amount per student you miss by on the worst year, if you had added that, mm. you'd still have one of the, mm. the most affordable option for mm. residents um, of, of, of any community around us. So I think that's, that's I, I was surprised that it was that, that close to, to achieving what, what, what you set out to do. But one of the things that did not not pay for was our administrative cost out of our office here. It took a lot of hours for our staff in the office here, which that wasn't part of the tuition. Mm -hmm. And I and it would be my opinion if we are going forward with it that that needs to be part of the calculation. Many more hours on a part-time staff, uh, one of the part-time staffs, to do the program, to take care of this. And having, I understand what you're saying, Celia, but that is not what, how team happened this year. And became the problem. Everything was last minute and doing programs and stuff. If it all happened in March, we may not be having this discussion. That's, I mean, we can't, we have to make sure that we know that if that's going to be the case, and that is what we have to do. Because that, it was a lot of last minute stuff, which put a lot more problems on our staff in this office that we weren't expecting to have. So, so if there are enough volunteers that everything can be in order and is done right. well in advance, it's, it's not all about the revenue mutual. So that, that was one mandate, but um, if, if all the parts are worked out ahead of time, it would be smoother and then it wouldn't be such an administrative lift on the office. But as it is now, both programs are um, requiring a lot of administrative assistance. So. You know, in that way is, is what I meant, that it would be beneficial at this point to focus on one because you've got volunteers and, when, and, and because time is precious and because the available help is, is precious, it would, it, it would help the one program if the one program could get as much focus as is available. But ultimately anything is possible if there are enough volunteers, of, enough help of one sort or another and that the board decides to delegate office help as well. So, I mean, it makes all the sense in the world to build in administrative overhead as, as the cost that, that a record or any other program might have to meet. And, and you can understand at the beginning where you want to give a program a leg up that you might not think about doing that. But, you know, as a program reaches a certain stage, I mean, it's entirely uh, Fair, and from an accounting point of view, it would make sense mm -hmm. to include administrative overhead, which would include whatever you know, whatever legal review, whatever might you might think to have. So you know, that's something to consider. It sounds like there's still room to increase the rate uh, for the program services and still be competitive with surrounding communities. That aside, I do have another question. Are, are we finding that? Uh, the people who use the services are happy and satisfied. Is that a that's generally By so that's not an issue. That yes. happy happy campers, shall we say? Yes. 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 So on on that, I just I have a taxpayer beef. <laughs> okay. So I kind of get what you're saying. I'm a taxpayer in this town. My taxes pay 
for Caroline's salary. They now pay for the new bookkeeper's salary. And I am still paying pretty much tuition for this rec program to exist. So I feel like I'm being like double dipped and triple dipped as far as being a parent with children who might need this. <laughs> but I'm paying taxes. So <laughs> where do my taxpayer money, where does my taxpayer money go? If I don't get this benefit, it doesn't this benefit the whole community. Let's go back to that because if we don't have community resources for our children to grow up and become responsible, wonderful adults, this is an investment. We have to talk about that. This is an investment in our children in this town. And we're still paying tuition. And, and I don't know, I had that talk with you guys. Like, if we raise the tuition, I'm getting, I'm getting priced out of my own program because at this point in time with five kids you know and that's I know my own issue but um, <laughs> um, it's still as cheap as it is when you multiply things by five um, so you know which is why you know I backed up my my complaint right I I complained Suzanne I came right in here and introduced myself to you and I and here I still sit so three years later so you know it's an important program to me and my family um, but I but I also feel it's so important to to all of us here that still live here and um, you know, our kids grow up, and a lot of them like to move back to this town after they have kids and come back here. Miles, you went to Summer Rec when you were a child, right? Still have that belt, but I don't color now. Just, um, things cost, unfortunately, in some ways, things cost what they cost. And... And I think it's important to be realistic about what summer rec is going to cost or, or to try to guess what, what, what it might be a reasonable amount for the select board to put in the budget. And then let you know, the budget committee have their say and let, and let the citizens have their say. If, if it's, I mean, to me, I, I would, I'm here at this hearing in order to say I think it's an important program and I think we should budget a reasonable amount because things cost what they cost and the more we try to save money in the beginning suddenly it looks like this big jump when it starts costing what it really costs and so we have to be relatively honest about what things cost as you go forward so I, i've said it now uh, at least six different times I <laughs> I, i'm supporting that 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 the select board try to find a way to put a reasonable um, line item in for for this for the recreation I went back to our registration program and talking about numbers, if people want raw data, 61 um, registered campers were from Rollinsford. That's 47 families. And to speak on an emotional, personal level, my family would not have seen friends and family if we did, and other community members and connected with the community and known our neighbors if we didn't put our kid in camp. And my kids, like, I can't wait to go to camp and see my friends. So it's not only beneficial for the parents who have to work that 10 hour work day, or whatever their schedule is, but it's also beneficial for the kids. And as I told the select board when I made my presentation, if anybody wants to know what the benefits of camp are, go ahead and Google it. You'll come up with two dozen reasons. On a side note, the rec committee has been bugged to come up with job roles and so forth. <laughs> this was a document that circulated through our committee earlier this year with all of the dates and roles and it just needed to have people sign up for those roles. It's double-sided. It's the roles. And I did just send Caroline today because I spent all day working on roles of the committee, the camp staff, and 
some town agencies that we would utilize a 12 to 15 page document of all of the tasks that um, like an individual does, how they go through the committee to do it, how it goes to the select board after it goes to the committee, what we expect of the camp administrators, and so forth. So that is waiting to be reviewed. <laughs> waiting for you. Did you have any on that? I can forward you that. I was hoping that maybe we could get a copy of it and discuss it during our meeting. There is a recreation committee meeting immediately following this public hearing. So um, I would ask, invite you all to join. All the meetings are open to the public. And further, to continue to watch the budget conversation with the select board. They have a budget workshop on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. Um, they have their regular scheduled select board meeting on Monday night at 6.30, and the budget committee is taking up um, department head presentations for 2020 budget proposals starting on the 23rd, and recreation is not getting heard until they're not slated for November mm -hmm. at, at some mm -hmm. time. But, um, but it's just one conversation of many. <coughs> budget is a, is a long mm -hmm. process with many stops along the way. Lori? I have two things. One, I know it is not an intention, but I get the feeling sometimes that it's coming across that some of the volunteers or the volunteers are going to you or to Denise, the, the board, and not doing something themselves. But it's been my observation that the things that we have to go to you for are things we can't do. So it's not that we're trying to put more work on you, it's stuff that we can't do. We can't allocate money, we can't write a check, we can't, you know, it all has to, that has to go through you. So I just get a feeling that sometimes other people are understanding that. They're thinking that we're just giving you a job to do. And my second thing is, um, I think we need consistency and momentum um, because if you keep, if you provide a program for a parent in particular and then the next year you don't have it and then you have it the next year and then you don't, or this is changed, so you're just going to stop using it and go somewhere they can depend on. Indeed, yes. Um, with regard to, to the role of my office, you're quite right that there's a good amount of things that are just the role of the administrative office. There are other parts of the program, though, that if they were figured out ahead of time, um, or, or if they were a documented process, a lot of times if, if a committee member had a question, they could reference a procedure that doesn't currently exist, or a policy that we don't have, or, or something like that. But we, we have these conversations about this is how we're going to do this, and then it comes time to do this, and people don't remember or they forget part of it because that's not what they're thinking about all day long. That's not like their bailiwick. They do their day job. They spend time with their family, and they don't remember how do we pay for this field trip. And so there are some questions that come up and come up, um, and and there are like sort of individual strategy sessions. Like every committee member has got their ideas, which is great. I mean, this is, this is how this moves forward. This is how things get created. And, and, and I don't mean to take away from that. But um, my hope is that in a well-documented program with timelines, and this is a good start, Celia. Thank you. Uh, oh, you can thank the previous chair. It, it, it's helpful. but. Um, it's helpful for the committee members to have, for everybody, committee members, rec director, the select board, the, you know, the staff, for everybody to reference documents so that they know how things are supposed to be done, when they're supposed to be done, um, in what manner or to whom they consult about certain things. And, and so there is right now traffic in my office because of that. So it's kind of, it's kind of both. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think that's anybody's fault, really, you know, and, and it, it's just the nature of, again, a volunteer organized program and, you know, 
being accountable to um, the way government has to operate, and volunteers aren't used to that. You know, I, I've said it before to Kelly, like, I, I wouldn't be putting you through the ringer like this if it was my personal company, you know, like, but when you're government and you're working with public funds, you gotta, you gotta operate at a different level. And so, you know, I, you can't expect volunteers to be used to that and to understand how these things have to operate. So, you know, anything is possible, you know, having it in writing so that people can reference things. Um, would help a lot. I would just like to iter reiterate some of the comments that have come up tonight that the select board strongly look at what will be lost if this program stops um, and consider postponing the decision, maybe not adding more to the budget for a rec director, but keeping the budget as it is and just postponing the decision until March when town meeting comes around and we see the progress that the committee has made. Because the groundwork laid by the committee over the last three years has been quite a lot. We have on our drive legal statutes to the, about staff and inflatables and all of that. That's at our fingertips that all we have to do is call up for you guys if that's what you want to look at. And I've invested a lot of my time looking at different funding sources that we could talk about that would alleviate some of the strain on the town. We could, if we get a facility like Kelly Ass, we can charge an admission fee and that has to go back into that building. We can get some of our buildings and stuff, can't go through our budget, they have to go on the CIP because they're such large projects and we're a town entity. And, um, there's also a revolving fund and there's also um, a fee-based structure where the fees come right in, they go to the treasurer and we have to request from the treasurer that the money collected be paid out. So there are different funding options to alleviate some of the stress on the town, but we've worked so diligently to get the program up and running and to meet the requests of everybody involved that there hasn't been much time to review that as a group. Are there any other comments? Does the board want to add anything? No. no. Okay. Thank you all for coming, and uh, I just will close the public hearing and um, maybe take a five-minute sojourn and, and leave the recreation committee meeting.